Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to recognize for one minute the distinguished Majority Leader of the United States House of Representatives, the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Hoyer. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized for one minute. I thank the uh, Chairman for yielding. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I got here just a little before I was going to speak, and I heard the gentlelady from Illinois speak, and she talked about flexible work hours. And I thought to myself, uh, who decides what's flexible? Historically, of course, working men and women were told, you'll do this for that much at this time under these conditions. That was the reality. Uh, sweatshops, health endangering shops, uh, long hours, little pay. And then the labor unions came along and they got some strength and they got some support. And lo and behold, the middle class started to grow and start to make good wages, safe working conditions, and yes, flexible hours. Mr. Speaker, as we work to create jobs and build our economy back better, we need to make sure that the jobs that are available to Americans help them get by and get ahead. That's what the minimum wage battle is about. That's what this is about. Average working people wanting to get by, wanting to have a decent salary, wanting to have a decent working conditions. Very frankly, that just didn't happen Mr. Speaker, some people died to make that a reality. Others were beaten and battered in order to have that be a reality. Child labor, abuse of gender, women abused on the workplace, working in terrible, odious conditions. That's why Democrats passed the PRO Act last year, and that's why we'll do so again today. One of the most important tools for workers to secure better pay and benefits is the right to organize and bargain collectively. Those of you who have been employers uh, know that uh, you want to maximize profits and you want to try to manage and see uh, whether you can hire people for X amount of dollars rather than X plus Y. That right was secured over the course of generations by workers who fought to have the right recognized and secured. Collective bargaining made possible the prosperity and upward mobility that was the hallmark of America in the 20th century. Strong unions lead to better pay, higher quality, and more affordable health care, more secure retirement benefits in workplaces that are safer, not just for union members, but for all workers. Unfortunately, in the 21st century, Mr. Speaker, the right to organize has been eroded and weakened. As a result, many workers are stuck with no recourse to demand the better pay and benefits they deserve and they need, and their families need, and we need as a middle-class society that knows that we are a consumer economy. Henry Ford knew if you didn't pay them, they couldn't buy your cars. Pretty simple equation. The PRO Act would change, uh, would change that empowering workers once again through their right to organize. It prevents management from misclassifying workers. And I, and I urge any of you to think whether or not that happens. This gig economy sounds great until you get to be 65 or 67 or, and you look around and there's nobody behind you. There's nobody to lift you up. There's nobody to say thank you for that 30 years or 40 years or 50 years of service to our company or to our uh, economy. It prevents management from misclassifying workers in order to avoid negotiating the fair pay and safe working conditions they deserve. 
No, they're just contract employees. They don't have any real attachment or relationship with our company. They're just contract, and we can use them one day and throw them away the next. Moreover, the PRO Act levels the playing field for labor unions and contract negotiations. Maybe you don't believe in that, Mr. Speaker. Not you personally, but maybe there are people who don't believe that they ought to be equal. After all, I started the business. I invested money. I agree with that. I want to see them make money. I'm a pro-capitalist Democrat. I want you to know that. A pro-capitalist American. I've been around the world, and I've seen uh, non-capitalist societies. They don't work very well. But the capitalist society works better if everybody is lifted, not just some. I want to thank Chairman Scott of the Education and Labor Committee for his hard work on this bill, as well as the members of his committee. I am proud that we Democrats strongly support this bill, which is so central to our effort to make opportunities more accessible and more broadly available to American workers as we look to rebuild our economy stronger after COVID-19. The leader of the party on the other side of the aisle has said, in his uh, speech that he gave at the beginning of the session, we're the workers' party. We will see, Mr. Speaker, when we vote on this bill, whether uh, that statement was accurate. The workers are not against this bill. As I said last year when we passed this bill, the PRO Act is the workers' rights legislation that working people in our country need and for which they have been waiting uh, for far too long. That's why we need to pass this bill today and send it to the Senate. So I urge, Mr. Speaker, a yes vote for our workers, for our families, for our children, and for our effort to build back better and stronger from the challenges we now face. And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Virginia Reserve.